Hi everyone, welcome back. If I gave you some number, this would be video number five in the equations that I've just been doing. I look at these ones, I feel like saying these are weird cases. They're not weird cases necessarily, but they're just a bit different. So you're sitting in class, and you're doing all the questions in the textbook or you're on the worksheet, and you get to the test and it's different. And it throws you off and you think, what's different? What made it different? Why did I get it wrong? Someone shows you afterwards and you go, oh my goodness, I could have just done that question. So let's have a look at some of them that just look a bit different. This one had an X here and an X there. So this is called collecting like terms. Just a normal, everyday, simple question. And maybe you don't fully understand collect like terms, or you don't realise you can just go 3X plus 2X is 5X. If this was an X and this was an X, I can add them together. By the way, let's say we were looking for this answer to the question you were trying to guess, you could just think of it as 3x and 2x and make 5x, and then guess the answer to the question. And then you go 5, what's the rec? Uh, 10, and you go 2, and let's do it properly. Between them is a times. How do I get rid of a times for a 5? I divide this side by 5, divide that side by 5. 5 and the 5 goes once, you're left with an x. 5 and the 10 goes twice. So let's check out and see. 3 by 2 is 6. 2 by 2 is 4. So 6 plus 4 makes 10. So collecting like terms is about, we're actually adding those numbers where those x's stay the same. But just remember in reality, we know these are 2's. So I've actually got 3 lots of something, plus 2 lots of something, here's 5 lots of something. Now let's have a look at this one. Why do I say in previous videos everyone goes wrong? They go minus one, minus one. And if I had a dollar for each time people said that, I'd be able to buy myself a new car, I think. <laughs> it's a nice way to put it. Let's have a look. The one is under the control of that bar there. And that bar actually says there's a bracket there and a bracket there. But we don't write the brackets because mathematicians know that there's a bar there because of that. So the one is stuck inside. I can't just pull it out and take away one because of order of operations. Have a look at the two though. The only thing controlling that two is this divide by here. So there's a divide by. So that's how it was the opposite divide by two. I'm going back again to the opposites to both sides. I'm always gonna talk about just do the opposites to both sides. No matter how hard it gets, just do the opposites to both sides. So what's the opposite of divide by two? Multiply by two. If I multiply this side by 2, I multiply that side by 2. Now, by the way, I do see students who do this. They know to go times by 2, but they write it down there. And then they get in a mess. Because they write 5x plus 1 over 4. And they go, I thought I knew what I was doing, but I, I just made it worse. And they don't know why they made it worse. So you might notice my habits all the time. This one's a bottom or a denominator. And I make it when I multiply it by 2. I try to make it look like it's a top or a numerator. Because a top can cancel with a bottom. So that's why we just cross them out if we want to. Or I can go 2 into 2 goes once. I don't have to write the 1. By the way, if I didn't have that bracket written there, they just disappear. The purpose is get rid of that divide 2 on the bottom. So now I've got 5x plus 1 equals 8. And now it's like the question we've done previously. I'm going to shortcut a little bit. Opposite of plus 1 is minus 1. I minus 1 there or minus 1 there. I could have gone divide 5 first. Most people mess it up when they do. And also it becomes fractions, which is not nice. So let's have a look what's happened. The 1's are gone. I'm left with 5x equals 7. And the last bit is how do I get rid of a times 5? Back to that again, divide 5. If I do it to this side, I've got to do it to the other side to balance up the scales. And the answer is actually 7 on 5. By the way, you could say, how many times does 5 go into 7? Goes in once. How many are left over? 5, 6, 7. There's 2 left over. So if you started with fifths, you end up with fifths. So one or two fifths would be a hard one for me. Talking about when I was at school, I put the numbers back in like I did here in the check. This one's harder to do, much harder. Now what makes this one different? The bracket. And not only is it the bracket, but it's also got the X written over here instead of there. 
doesn't really make any difference. I've still got a multiply between any two symbols. There's a multiply, unless it's 23 or 37, then it's just two numbers. Let's have a look what it is. That eyebrow reminds me that I've gone, I've gone two times four, which is eight. That eyebrow, you don't really need it for this, but I want you to see it still. Reminds me I've gone two times three X. So everything in here gets doubled. That's all that says. Everything in the bracket will be doubled. So the four will become an eight and the three will become a six and still got the eight. Now here's another thing you, I can do in tests and see students muck up. They'll go then take six, take six, because they think they're removing the number at the back. They're not, they're removing the number by itself. This is married to the six with a multiply, but the, six, the eight is by itself. So I can very simply just go take, oops, go to red. I can go take eight from this side, take eight from this side, and then the eight, take eight is gone, zero. And now this is a six times x, and then nine take eight is one. What's the opposite of times by six? Divide by six, divide by six. Now some of you will go, I've heard Mr. P saying the same thing over and over again. Have patience. It takes, just watch it for a little bit longer. Not necessarily, not necessarily right now, but just keep hanging in with the method. In the long run, I know what people do. Six into six goes once, so I can just write the X, and the answer is one six. Now imagine him guessing one six for that. And by the way, if the teachers really want to muck you up, they can put in negatives and make it worse. So let's have a look at this one. The three is married to the X. The four has got the divide keeping it with the X, but the one is sitting there all by itself. There's the one by itself. So I can get rid of that first. Minus one, minus one. If I wanted to, I could multiply this by four and that by four and that by four. Not a bad method. Sometimes I'll go back and teach people that. Let's have a look what's happened there. I've left with a three over, three X over four. That's gone. Three take one is two. Now, I could cross multiply if you watch the previous video, but when the X is on the top, it's not a great advantage to cross multiply. So if you want to see cross multiplication, just go back to the previous video. This says divide by four. How can I get rid of a top, divide by four and multiply by four? If I do it to that side, I'm going to balance up the scale again, i multiply that side by four. This is where the videos get longer and the information. Four into four goes once. So I've actually got one times three. So I've actually just got a three X. I've got an eight. Here we go, I nearly finished. Times by three is a divide by three. If I do it to the right hand side, I've got to do it to the left hand side. If I do it to one side, I've got to do it to the other. And here's where people come and stuck with their fractions. Three into three goes one, so I don't have to write the one for the X. And how many times, no actually eight on three is the answer to the question. I usually like to write four. So there's another possibility on what you can write that as. We could write it in all sorts of ways, decimals and you name it. Three into eight goes twice. So three and three is six. And there's two left over. If I started with thirds, I end with thirds. And there we've got four fairly unusual cases. The only thing your teachers can do now would be make them a little bit more complicated or put more negatives in or even put fractions in to make them look harder. Thanks.